From being a desert warrior to becoming one of the most brutal dictators Africa has ever seen, the story of Hassan Habra is one of a man who did everything to become the president of Chad. From kidnapping foreigners to fund his war effort to killing almost 40,000 people to maintain his grip on power. On today's African History 101, we look into the life of Hassan Habre, the African Penoche. Hassan Habre was born in 1942 in northern Chad, then a colony of France into a family of shepherds. Hassan Habre excelled at school. After finishing primary school, like many young Africans, pre-independence era, Habre would go on working for the French colonial administration, where he impressed his superiors and gained a scholarship to study in France at the Institute of Overseas Higher Studies in Paris. He completed a university degree in political science and also obtained a doctorate degree. During his time in France, Hassan Habre was exposed to the writing of Franz Faron, Ernesto Che Guevara, and Raymond Aron, stirring a revolutionary mind in the young man. In 1971, Habre returned to Chad, where he was given a senior position in the colonial government as a deputy prefect. As a senior local official, he was sent to Tripoli to persuade two rebel chiefs to lay down their arms against the government. Instead, Hassan Habre joined their struggle. Hassan Habre joined the National Liberation Front of Chad, also known as Florinat, where he became a commander in Second Liberation Army of Florinat, along with Gokuni Uedi. Habre split from Florinati and became the commander of the Council of Armed Forces of the North. In 1976, Owedi and Habre called. This led to Habre forming his own group, the Armed Forces of the North. His and Habre first came to international attention in the Crystal Affair when a group under his command attacked the town of Babadai on 21st April 1974 and took three European hostages with the intention of rationing them for 10 million francs and arms. The captives were a German physician, Dr. Christopher Stwein, whose wife Efrida was killed in the attack, and two French citizens, Francois Crostot, an archaeologist, and Mark Combe, a development worker. Stanwen was released on 11 June 1974 after significant payment by West German officials. Combe escaped in 1975, but despite the intervention of French government, Crostor was not released until 1 February 1977. Habre's methods of kidnapping made him unpopular with some rebel leaders, including Owedi. This was one of the reasons the two rebel leaders split in 1976. In August 1978, Hassan Habre was given the post of Prime Minister of Chad and Vice President of Chad as part of an alliance with General Felix Marom. However, the power-sharing alliance did not last long. In February 1979, Habre's forces and the National Army under Marom fought in Jamina. The fighting effectively left Chad without a national government. To help bring political stability, an interim transitional government was formed. On 23rd March 1979, Gokuni was installed as the interim Chadian head of state. He was acclaimed president of the transitional government of national unity, with Hassan Habre serving as minister of defense. The transitional government was plagued with a difference in political ideologies, with Gokuni Owedi being pro Libya and Soviets while Habre was pro-Western. In the time of the Cold War, such an alliance was a recipe for disaster, and Habre would take full advantage of rivalry between the US and the Soviet Union to achieve his political desires. In 1980, Hassan Habre was ousted from the transitional government of national unity, and he went into exile in Sudan, where he reorganized his rebel group and resumed fighting. At the same time, Libya invaded Chad in July 1980. 
occupying and annexing the Auzu Strip. Gokuni Owedi responded by signing a treaty of friendship and cooperation with Libya. The treaty allowed the Chadian government to call on Libya for assistance if Chad's independence or internal security was threatened. This action did not sit well with the US and France who were determined to reduce the sphere of influence of Gaddafi, who was supported by the Soviet Union. The United States and France turned to Hassan Habri, seeing him as a safeguard against the Muammar Gaddafi's government in Libya. Under Ronald Reagan, the United States of America gave covert CIA paramilitary support to help Habre take power. With the U.S. support, Habre rebel group managed to defeat the, his long-time rival, Gokuni Uwedi. On 7 June 1982, Gokuni fled in Jamina across the Chali River into Cameroon. He subsequently went into exile in Tripoli, Libya. Then Habre became the president of Chad. By 1983, Gokuni Uwedi returned to Chad with a substantial Libyan troops to fight the Habris regime through guerrilla warfare. They managed to occupy some territories in the north of Chad, but immediately the USA and France came to the aid of Hassan Habre. French sent paratroops with air support, while the Reagan administration provided two electronic surveillance planes to coordinate air cover. By 1987, Gaddafi's forces had retreated, ending the war. Once in power, Habre banned all political parties, making Chad a one-party state. Habre's regime was characterized by widespread human rights abuses and atrocities. Following his rise to power, Habre created a secret police force known as the Documentation and Security Directorate or the DDS, under which his opponents were tortured and executed. One of the DDS's most notorious detention centers was an underground prison known as the Passing, because it was a coveted swimming pool in the capital, Njemina. Some methods of torture commonly used by the DDS included burning the body of the detainees with incandescent objects spraying gas into their eyes, nose, and ears, forced swallowing of water, and forcing the mouth of detainees around an exhaust pipe of running automobile. Hassan Habri's government also periodically engaged in ethnic cleansing against groups such as the Sara, the Hajarai, and the Zahawa, killing and arresting group members on masses when it was perceived that their leaders posed a threat to his regime. A rebel offensive in November 1990, which was led by Driss Debe, a Zahawa former army commander who had participated in a plot against Habre in 1989, defeated Habre forces. The French chose not to assist Habre on this occasion, allowing him to be ousted. Explanation and speculation regarding the reasons for France's abandonment of Habre included the adoption of policy of non-interference in Chadian conflicts, dissatisfaction with Habre's unwillingness to move towards multi-party democracy, and favoritism by Habre towards the U.S. rather than French companies with regards to oil development. Habre fled with 11 million of public money to Cameroon and the rebels entered Jamina on 2 December 1990. Habre subsequently went into exile in Senegal. The former dictator lived freely for more than 20 years in a market Dhaka suburb, and he married his second wife, with whom he had four children. While in exile, Habre became more religious, swapping his military garb for baron white robes and a cap. Habre was considered a discreet, generous neighbor and pious Muslim who helped finance the construction of several mosques, simply the man had rebranded himself. In Chad, the victims of Habre's regime were not ready to leave the man who had brought a lot of pain scot free. Human rights groups hold Habre responsible for killing thousands of people, 
but the exact number is unknown. Killing included massacres against ethnic groups in the south in 1984 and against the Hawajerai in 1987 and against the Hawa in 1989. Human Rights Watch charged him with having authorized tens of thousands of political murders and physical torture. Habre had been called the African Penoche in reference to former Chilean dictator Augusto Penoche. Habre would personally sign death warrants and oversee torture session and was accused of personally participating in torture. The government of Idris Debe established a commission of inquiry into the crimes and misappropriations committed by ex-president Hassan Habre and his accomplices in 1990, which reported that 40,000 people were killed under his rule. Belgium issued a warrant for Habre's arrest in 2005, as the country's universal law allows its court to prosecute human rights offenses committed anywhere in the world, but Senegal refused to extradite Habre. In 2012, Senegal bowed to international pressure, which led to the Parliament of Senegal passing a law allowing for the creation of an international tribunal in Senegal to try Habre. The judges of the tribunal would be appointed by the African Union and come from elsewhere in Africa. On 20 July 2015, the trial started. Waiting for the trial to open, Habre shouted, Down with imperialists! This trial is a farce by rotten Senegalese politicians, African traders, Valley of America. After that, Habre was taken out of court and the trial began without him. On 30 May 2016, the extraordinary African chamber found Habris guilty of rape, sexual slavery, and ordering the killing of 40,000 people during his tenure as the Chadian president, and sentenced him to life in prison in the prison du Camp Manuel in Senegal. The verdict marked the first time an African Union backed court convicted a former ruler for human rights abuses, and the first time that the courts of one country have prosecuted the former ruler of another country for crimes against humanity. Habre died in Senegal on 24th August 2021, a week after his 79th birthday, after being hospitalized in Dakar's main hospital with COVID-19. He had fallen ill while in jail a week earlier. In a statement, Habre's wife, Fatima Raymond, Habre confirmed that he had COVID-19 and is buried in Yofu Muslim Cemetery. Thanks for watching today's African History 1-1 episode. See you next time.